Hello and welcome to episode 10 of the podcast. Justin, say hi. What's up everybody? Grassley <laughs> and Justin here. We got zero, another podcast episode, beautiful day up in Grand Rapids, Michigan. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. This is sort of like a mini milestone for us. We reached episode yeah. 10. Episode 10. We're I actually saw, for... I saw a statistic that a lot of like podcasts and shows like this don't make it to episode 10. So yeah. that's actually... No, uh, we're trucking along. We're trucking along. Yeah. So um, got a pretty fun podcast for you today. The, the main topic is going to be... Uh, we're all about team archetypes. So we're going to be going over singles and doubles, but mostly uh, there's going to be a lot of singles talk, but we are going to be talking VGC as well. And this isn't going to go super in-depth. It's more of like a general... Uh, like an overview. Like an overview, a, a, a big umbrella sort of. of we, we sort of broke it up into three main categories, and we're going to talk about that today. Yeah. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah, like you said, uh, yeah, like mostly singles, but we're going to sprinkle in like a little bit of VGC. Mm-hmm strategy there too. VGC is like a different animal. Yeah. And these team archetypes definitely leaned more towards. Yeah, the foundation, like when these things were categorized, they were categorized for singles. Yeah, definitely. And those things are kind of like have been moving over to like the VGC kind of side. But uh yeah. But um anyway dude, before we get started, before we get into the the nitty gritty, what have you been up to? Not a whole lot, man. Uh just uh <laughs> no I'm just kidding. I've been up to a whole whole heck of a lot haven't we we've been doing a lot of prep all may has been prep 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 for um some series series nine so basically uh medical stuff and family stuff and may is just the busiest month of the year for us we already talked about that in the previous podcast uh the, the whole pmc crew is basically booked most of the month and we had a wedding going on uh shout out to uh what oh God? What was his? I forgot what his uh, his tag was. Cash in the oh, trash. Cash in the trash. Yeah. yeah Shout but... out to Mike and Amanda for getting married. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's super busy, but it, we so we've been prepping the uh, the Gigantamax to Master Ball series for all of June, and we've been also working on all of our like standard Series Eight teams. Also doing a lot of practice, just playing basically nothing but Series Eight in terms of like. Uh, the cart. That's what I've been up to. Just, yeah. just series nine or series nine. Excuse me. D- just diving into series nine a lot, and I've been working a lot on showdown. We- we've been uh, a lot of late nights between the two of us, writing teams and working on teams for uh, you know different combos or different Gigantamax and yeah, yep. a lot of fun stuff. Yeah, but we'll we'll chat about that one like a little more later. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. We'll absolutely. Do, like, an update on that. Yep. Um, that's what I've been up to. Just just a lot of a lot of doubles so far. Uh, but we have been actually doing uh, uh, a little bit of singles prep in the background also, which is what brought us to this show today. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, we so do. So what, you, what we, have you been up to? Uh, well, I, this is last podcast. I think last podcast I mentioned I went on a UP trip and I was making a video and stuff. I finally had that video finished. Beautiful. If you're interested in seeing what the nature is like, if, like if you're not from Michigan and you want to see like what it's really like here. Yeah, if you want to see what it's really like in Michigan, especially the Upper Peninsula, check out the video. I will link it in the description. Other than that, um, I just picked up fishing. I'm just, I'm just finally got my own pole. Uh, I haven't caught a dang thing, <laughs> but the experience is fun. I've it's been, relaxing at least. Yeah, I've been going out with my buddy Connor, who eventually go. will make his way onto this channel. He runs uh, Great Lakes Outdoor Wonders, which is a... Yeah, we've talked about that before. Yeah, this is a channel he's been working on. He's trying to do some nature stuff, so you'll be probably hopefully seeing some more stuff from him. Uh, I'll probably be on there once in a while, but yeah, just picking up fish, and that's... Uh, I can't disc as much right now because I went through surgery and like I've got physical limitations. So like, mm-hmm. fishing is like the perfect thing. Yeah. For me now to like, to get into. Plus, exactly. Summer's here. Like it's. I went out the other day. I didn't catch anything, but I went out for five hours, just hitting different spots all over like uh, our local lake areas and stuff like that. And it was there just a go. good time. We had fun. Yeah, it was amazing. Nice. Was like, nice. The experience nice weather. Was, it was amazing. Oh yeah, it was perfect. There it was we perfect, go, dude. I'm out. I was at like a hundred feet in some shallow water, just Beautiful. surrounded by water, and it was awesome. There you so, go. Yeah, but that's what I've been up to. Um, so I think with that, we're gonna get into the first part of the actual show. So, all right, we're gonna talk about tier trends as we pretty much always do on the podcast. We love to talk about tier trends. Yep, we would not miss it for the world. So let's get into it. 
All right, so we got two trends for June. Yeah, uh, look at that. I see a couple of uh, channel favorites here. Let's yeah, talk about yeah, them. yeah. So, so with our constant coverage of Scizor, we have pushed Scizor up into OU, and and he just, obviously it was us, right? Yeah, it was us. It was <laughs> us. How many times have we featured Scizor? Like we've seen, we featured him three or four times. Yep. Plus the set guide, the beautiful yeah, we the, set, we guide the set, that set guide that you did. We did a singles vid. We did a doubles vid. And every time we talk about Scizor, he goes up in usage. I don't think it's a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out in the comments. Let us, down, let us know down in the comments below. Uh, do you love Scizor as much as us? Shout out to Scizor in the comments. Spoiler alert, you don't. Anyway. <laughs> so the reason Scizor, um, I believe, is rising up is because uh, especially defensive sets are becoming really popular. Yep. And it beats, uh, we're going to talk about this guy a lot, is Kyurem. Yep. Kyurem, Kyurem, however you say it. Ice Dragon. Um, especially defensive um, sets can't really touch Scizor. At all. Their best option is to fish for special defense drops if they're running Shadow Ball. If they run if Shadow, running Shadow Ball. If they're Shadow Ball. They do run yeah, Earth Power, too. Like, they'll be running. They can run Earth Power, but again, because he's part bug type, bug resist, so it's only neutral. Yep. And it's not stab. Yep. So, yeah, there could be a specs behind it, but again, Max Spadef or. A, or Heavily, I say max. It doesn't always mean max, but heavily spadef. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's really, really, really strong because his technician boosted uh, stab bullet punch is still more than enough. Without uh, you don't have to have up two fifty two adamant to do the and damage. Because you have that um, sub roost mm -hmm. is a really popular Kyrem set too. And because you got access to bullet punch, you can bullet punch them out of sub range before they even move. Yep. So I mean, their best option is just like attempt to roost off your bullet punches, yep. and then they're they're. And there's also I I personally like the bulky. Uh, what I like in singles is the bulky Caesar, and I run roost, uh, swords dance, knock off, bullet punch. Yep. See, I run one very similar, except instead of swords dance. I've got uh, U-turn, so I've got like roost, U-turn, oh, nice. bullet nice. punch, and knock off, like that really yep. utility kind yep. of. I like and that a that's, lot. That's I, super viable. Yeah, yeah, too. yeah. So. And, and it's one of those five moves slots. Six, he gets defog too. So yeah, like, yeah. yeah. So uh, next in line, we got um, we got Slowbro Galarian rising up in usage for UU. It makes sense because he got banned out of you. Got the Mega Buster. Yeah, yeah. I we are all pushing for all the bros or all the slows to get into OU guys. Yeah. So keep using them. Absolutely, keep using them. I'm really excited to talk about this next one. Uh, okay, we got Toxicroak I rising love in you. Yeah, it's all, yeah, he's got dry skin. It's just absolutely incredible. It's it's a really strong ability. Uh, it lets you get free switch ins to water type attacks. Um, uh, it'll get. It's basically like a, a built in like mixture of water absorb and rain dish. Yeah. Yes, yes, it makes you weak to fire type hits and you take damage in the sun, but. Like, how prevalent is that down here? You know what I mean? Yeah. There yeah. are... It, it does exist. I'm not saying that it doesn't. But just... I, I really do like him. It's, I personally like the Swords Dance with a Life Orb. Ooh, jolly. I, I like I like Swords Dance with Sucker Punch. There, yep, that's what I run, like, too. I really like that. I run Sucker Punch, Drain Punch, Poison Jab, and, and uh, Swords Dance. And I run Jolly with a Life Orb. Yep. It's really, really strong. Yep. And, and like, when you kind of, like, look at him, like... His dual stab's really nice because, like, you can attack things like Comfy. Yep. And you can sucker punch Celebi. Uh, Copper Raja is one of the biggest ones. Like, Copper Raja. Being able to being able to, to stab Drain Punch that. Yes. And then, um, like, being able to attack things um, like Bronzong. Like, Bronzong, unless it's Bronzong's running. Bronzong's really. Unless he's running our set. Yeah. Max defense. Yeah. This, but, like,. Yeah, you you can smack Bronzong pretty hard, and he's a huge threat in the meta right yeah. now. Like they do Very run earthquake, tanky. but yep. but yeah, um, and then obviously like you can hit things like Glastrier, who is new to the tier. Uh -huh. uh, you can hit things like Golurk. I think you, you outspeed Golurk by a little bit. Yep. Um, yeah, it's just it's just really good, and then uh, you know Zoroark, but that's like kind of niche. Yeah, that's pretty niche. But being able to have a, sec a late game sucker punch is always strong too. Yep, and you outspeed Sylveon as well. Yep. Sylveon, as we know, is like a really really popular option. I, f I see Sylveon on like almost every yeah. team that I face on And then stab poison yeah, exactly. And being able to have a stab poison jab. It's 
physical either steel or poison. Yeah. Because obviously with her stats, she's weaker on the physical side. Yeah. So poison actually kind of gets you pretty far in yeah, this tier. Yeah. Look at uh, Rotom Mo is a big one. Yep. And then like like you have mentioned, like water absorb. Intellion is so popular. Intellion. Right very popular. So just, is Mantine. Just switch in on snipe shot, get a, yep. get a boost, and then and then you're free to like sucker punch away. So yeah, absolutely makes sense why Toxic Croak is or rising. Get the, get the heal, but yeah, yeah, get that's what yeah, I, yeah, 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 get the heal. So yeah, um, it makes a lot of sense why he's rising, in my opinion. Super fun. Yeah. Next one we got Bisharp. Uh, Bisharp actually rising quite a bit from twenty five yeah. to twelve. Yeah, it's a big jump. And oh, look at that, like almost like. Oh, oh, a little bit over, excuse me, four full percent. Yeah, that's 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 significant. That is significant, and and I think that once again that goes back to the uh, Chiron, to right. Chiron because which again you made him popular. I, I know, think yeah, it's, dude, I think exactly. we're, are we trendsetters we now? We are trendsetters with our sixty subscribers. I think we are, dude. And shout out to our sixty-two subscribers, by the way. We appreciate you. And today you could be number sixty-three or sixty-four, sixty-five. All you gotta do is hit that red button, and while you're at it. If you are subscribed, make sure you plug that bell because then you get a notification every time that we upload a new video to the channel. Nice plug, nice plug. <laughs> so yeah, let's go look at OU. It mostly is because of uh, the Ice Dragon. That yeah. thing is, like Joey actually, I feel like, has really popularized it because yeah. he put out a video about, oh, my team gets 6 0 by Kyrim. Well, like every team does. Yeah. So, um, obviously, it's, like, it's good against things like Blissey and Clefable. Like, it kind of always... I I'm surprised Bisharp fell to UU in the first place. I am too. Bisharp has always been a premier staple. It's uh, being able to have Defiant, uh, really nice dual stab in terms of uh, Iron Head plus Sucker Punch, and the, the the like a lot of black glasses. Like they run a lot of black yeah. glasses plus knockoff. That does so, so much. It damage. really, really hurts. Yeah. Because of, obviously knockoff gets the boost w the turn that you knock off an item. Yeah, like you can smack things like Corviknight. Like I, I, you really, really, like literally smack it. It's yeah, so you know good, I mean? dude. It, Dragapult is rising yeah. in popularity too because um, being able to sucker punch that stab, sucker, super effective sucker yeah, because, punch with black glasses. Because Urshifu and, and mm -hmm. uh, Magirna have have been banned in Cinderace. Uh, yep. Like Dragapult has slowly risen back in popularity. Yeah. It's really nice to have Bisharp for that. But then, obviously, like we talked about, you kind of beat the sub Roost version of uh, Kyurem. Easily, actually. Um, Quite easily. Yeah, you just got to watch out for, like, the Scarf versions that are running Earth Power. Correct. Like, that's that's kind of the big thing about it. And, it, it, and, yeah, like, the knockoff is really good for these Scarf three. Scarf respects, yeah. These three Pokemon right here are, I think, another big reason is because yep. you could stab knock off them. They don't have their heavy-duty boots anymore, and then all of a sudden you're... Hazards are the, the ability to stab knockoff, to have that threat so something can't switch in. But then you also have the stab sucker punch. That duo, mm -hmm. it just keeps anything that's even remotely close, like anything that's super effective damage. Yeah, it keeps them in hard check. It also, if not a hard it, counter, it can also set stealth rock too. So yeah, like, it's got this like thunder wave. Thunder wave. That's that's what I run. Yep. So you've got this offensive presence, and you also have a it's a really good tool. Beach. Yeah. That offensive support. It's a good way to describe him. Yeah. All right, so let's move on to... Oh, no, we got a couple more. Mm -hmm. um, we got Mew uh, rising in UU. Not surprising. Mew it gets is, everything. It's the literal most versatile Pokemon in the game, right? Yeah. I'm so, and, it, and it does have a really good stat line. Um, base 100, it is it is the base 100 Pokemon. You know, the original. Yeah, the original. So, no, I, I don't really have much to say about Mew other than the fact that it's... I don't see a place. It's not that I don't see a place for it in OU. Yeah. I do. I just don't. It's hard to pin down because it's like you could bring an offensive Mew, Nasty mm -hmm. Plot three attacks. You could bring Swords Dance three attacks. Yeah, we fought you one of those one time. Yeah. It got me pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I was expecting the suicide lead. And and, and and that's another thing. You could have a suicide league. You could have dual screens. You could have a tank. You could ha like. It, it's sort of hard to pin down, but I I really do think that it, it is good in UU. Yeah. And it's good in OU, and for me, it works in either. Yep, yeah, agree. So the last one we got to talk about a little bit is Thwacky is rising in ZU. Uh, the combination of knockoff plus Grassy Glide setting Grassy terrain is actually yeah. pretty nice. All um, the reasons we love Rillaboom. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, and this thing has a violite, so it's actually pretty decent. Yeah. Uh, it's my favorite starter. I it's my least favorite form of them. I don't like thwacky. I I thwacky. I just don't. I don't want to say it's a lazy design. It just you know it doesn't read monkey to me. Yeah. I'm yeah. the aesthetic person. Like I got or we're the aesthetic channel. You know, yep. but. It just doesn't really read like a monkey. Like it just looks like they just kind of drew like a sort of banana blob. A, a rectangle, gave it arms. a rectangle with arms. Yeah, That's it, it looks like a toilet like to paper me. roll with arms. <laughs> right here's, <laughs> he's not as good as you. Oh. <laughs> but I do love the fact that you know he's he's my favorite grass, uh, my favorite starter of this gen. Would you look like the coverage of those of him? It almost seems pretty lackluster, but he's the ultimate late game cleaner. He's a late game, yeah. He's a real late game cleaner, and the fact that he can sword stance still, yeah. I mean, like he hit things like right on, obviously. Yeah. And, but it, the having the U turn, like leading, yeah. and then having a U turn on the switch in, like that's I think really the, the prevalence, honestly, one of it can't be understated. We have to talk about the elephant in the room is the fact that uh, his ability. Yeah. Is, is is one of the the fact that you can pack a, sorry can you scroll down one sec yeah yeah I just wanted to get his um, stats for his defenses so yeah we're at 70 defense so we're at like a B B plus for HP yeah uh, 70 and 60 so you know on their own times bro. times 0. 0.5 for the or times 1.5 for the the violite yeah now you're actually almost, you know, you're almost cooking with peanut oil down there. Especially and the fact that he's bringing grassy terrain. Look at all that green. Scroll again. Yeah. There's so just at the grass types alone. There's so many options. Like being able to run, the, being able to run uh, either the gluttony or the hustle flapple is, or or another one is uh, the focus sash. Ripen with the glass, grassy glide too, don't they? We do get yeah. grassy glide. Yeah. On so flapple. like it kind of empowers and sucker punch. Yeah. So you and dragon dance and acrobatic. What my person, what I love it right now. I want to shout out real quick for my favorite flapple at the moment. I don't run the hustle or gluttony. I'm running the ripen set, mm -hmm. and I'm running focus sash. For those of you who don't know, ripen means when you use a berry, the effect is doubled. And I'm using the focus sash. Uh, it's max adamant. And we're running the Salic Berry. So we get plus oh, two. Yeah. yeah. So we get the agility boost, or basically a tailwind boost. I run that plus, on Scizor. Plus two speed when we if once we go down to our So we basically we want to be on a focus sash. Mm -hmm. And then we have um the other version of that is we actually stay max adamant and we do the, I believe it's the, the name is escaping me, the Pattaya, yep. the max attack. Mm -hmm. And you, so basically you have a swords dance and you run the duo um, priority moves in Grassy Glide Sucker Punch. Yeah. So yep. there's, and then you run, ac either way, I was gonna say your, last move is, your last move is acrobatics because obviously you're, and then you just slap because then it's based, I think, what is it, 120? 120, yeah, yeah. because like, it's not mentioned on here, but like, Obviously, because this this rise is new, but you could like run the grassy seed, and then all of a sudden, you know, I mean, you've got access to grassy glide, you've got access to acrobatics, yeah, all of that stuff just like at your disposal if you run the hustle set with this. Really, really popular. So uh, he really empowers other grass types, and he's and like we said, he's like the ultimate. There's just one cleaner. random shout out because yeah. I'm, you know, uh, we we've we've got a 11 year old fan of the channel that really loves Flapple and Apple, yeah. so that's a special shout out for V. Yep. All right, so we'll kind of quickly try to move through these drops. We got Needle King falling in OU. Mm -hmm. I, I want to say it's not surprising. Kyrim. Kyrim. Uh, Kyrim is faster, um, so that makes... And strong enough to Oko easily. Yeah, yeah, so that kind of makes... And you don't really have, like, a super effective, uh, reliable option on Needle King to handle Kyrim. I mean, we get Flamethrower, but how many times did, did Needle King spec that over... Because usually it's Poison Jab, Earth Power, Ice Beam, Thunderbolt. Yeah, that or they do could sub Thunderbolt for Stealth Rock or Taunt, too. Or for like, Stealth Rock. Or but, Substitute. But like. you'd have to start teching in Flamethrower, I think, is the play. Yeah, that's that, even call. then it's still neutral. So, like, it doesn't really yeah. get you anything except coverage against Corviknight. So, kind of not surprised. It, 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 it helps if you have Needle King in and then you think that they're going to switch in. It's mm -hmm. at least some good neutral damage. And then you sw you switch out and something can revenge kill. Yeah, but this also kind of surprises me because of the rise of the new... Electric types in the tier, Magnazone and Zeraora. Yeah. So, so it's kind of surprising to see that. Yeah, it's a weird... Yeah. It's really weird. 
Uh, they got Pelipper falling in OU. Um, that's alluding to what I just mentioned, the rise of electric types in OU. Um, obviously, Zara Aura is the yep. ultimate pivot right now, like the ultimate offensive He's pivot. He's so good, and his volt switch is more than enough to just slap Penelope yeah. in the face. Yep. And then uh, the same with Magnezone. to run Choice Scarf Magnezone. Yeah. Um, I th- What's Pelipper's base speed? Because Magnezone uh, 65, might... 65, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, I think that's Magnezone's as well. So um, I run Choice Scarf Magnezone with Magnet Pull and stuff like that. So um, unless you're landing Hydro Pumps, it's it's hard to... A lot of people run Defensive. Mm-hmm. So they're usually running like Scald or something like that. Not a lot of people are running like Specs Pelipper. Yeah. Um, and while that is a threat to Magnezone in a 1v1 situation, like you can't switch into that, stuff like that. So... Uh, the rise of the electric types is hurting rain teams, hurting Pelipper, um, just totally in general. Uh, got Articuno falling in NU. Um, don't really have much to say about that. Uh, it's just you really need the competitive boost to really start slapping people, and, and it's that's hard to find in that tier. Like unless you're in a Dynamax format, or unless someone brings like Incense middle form Torcat or whatever. Yeah. I mean, like, there's, like, where are you, get, like, Defog Bravery, Bravier, like, outside of against, like, Defoggers, it's hard to get your, to get your, your competitive trigger. Like, when you look, there is no Intimidate in the tier that I know of. Oh, no, there is Intimidate Tauros. Yeah. However, you're usually running Sheer Force Tauros. Yeah. So, Defog, really your only way, and then some of the Defoggers are faster, like, uh, like Talon Flame, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he's falling, and then uh, moving on to the rest of the drops. Yeah, it's sort of weird that uh, Coco's falling, especially with the prevalence of all the electric types. Like, he exactly. is the electric battery starter. But I, I, in my opinion, I think that's because um, Zero Aura is just a better pivot. Mm. Like, at this point, why you would only run Coco now to kind of set up terrain and screens. Or if you don't need that on your team... You just run zero. Like, if you're just going to use it as a pivot, you just run zero aura. Zero aura gets, I mean, it's not stab, but it gets play rough, gets volt switch, mm-hmm. plasma fists. Yep. Gotcha. Um, and, and a, I don't want to say a better ability, but being able to just switch in on electric types with volt absorb, mm-hmm. it makes a little bit of sense, but yeah, also still surprising. Uh, Stella Stella Stila. Stila. This yeah. is This one's uh, kind of somewhat surprising, easy. Right? It, it's surprising, but I see why, and it's because Moltres. Moltres. Moltres gotcha. is now a staple in UU teams and that, spreading like the plague that really really hurts Celestila because you can't play defensively against Moltres you know I mean what are you going to do yeah. air slash it and and, and and leech seed it to death it's just not going to work yeah now, so it also has a hard time against really bulky waters like Giga Drain's not enough to really like put those Pokemon down and a lot of the waters are faster anyway mm-hmm. so it, it does make a little bit of sense, but at the same time, like, it is surprising to see, and then we also got, like, Thunderous Therian. Like, you can't touch Thunderous Therian. Mm-hmm. It resists all of the offensive moves outside of, like, Flamethrower. Well, I mean, you can get it with uh, Meteor Beam, but it's faster than you. You've got 145 base mm-hmm. special attack. So, uh, I think both of the Thundies are actually in this tier because the Incarnate version has been banned in RU, as far as I remember. So... Again, the rise of electric types is making life hard on things that that are weak to it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the Rotom is a big one for me. Yeah, I, Rotom I, as well. Both of those Rotoms are, are really, really prevalent. I don't see the Therian very much, but that's just my own personal... I, I see Rotom. I use it. I Like, I've used it. I no. see Rotom, one of those two, in basically every game. Exactly. Like they're, just, ev- so, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, I can see that. Uh, then last but not least, we've got Suicune kind mm-hmm. of falling in uh, in RU. Um, for me, I think it's just kind of because uh, Suicune's kind of a one-trick pony, and obviously the presence of Zerka Tree, just volt switching around like that. Uh, the rise of electric types. So make sure you're packing ground types on your teams, people. Yeah, it's a big deal. Uh, Suicune is really, really bulky. There's still a lot of options. Uh, it's just, yeah. It just... Reunicus is the better... Mm-hmm. bulky Pokemon option these days. Because, yeah. like, he sponges hits and has Regenerator. Like, it was sweet and you just a sponge different, hits. Different slash better typing for the situation. Exactly. Yep. All right, so that's going to do it for Tier Trends. We are going to move on to our next topic. We have... A, we got some special stuff for Yeah, a few announcements. All right, so everyone who's following the channel, you kind of already know, but we have put out some rental codes for Series 9 teams. These are some of the strongest Series 9 teams that we've been using. 
and we just some wanted of our to favorites. Them. Yeah, we got like a lot of our. We we tried to go a little like against the grain as far as like the. Some of them are pretty standard, but um, we kind of tried to go against the grain on some of these picks. Justin, which Pokemon? What are our future Pokemon here? Um, so we've got some real special things. So basically, on the video, there's six teams, uh, three from each of our accounts respectively, uh, and the rental code is going to be out for. It's definitely the entire rest of June, yeah, probably July yeah. also. Yep. Um, we'll see but, how the meta changes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Depends on how everything goes. But for for sure, for the rest of June, you guys can rent out um, these six teams from us. Uh, there is a Caesar team, There's uh, which is super, super fun. There's a Dragonite Rain team. We're using special Dragonite. Um, there's a Trick Room Sand team that features uh, things like Cradley and a Primarina. There's a... What else do we have? We got D-Knight. Oh, we said that one. We did? Yep. Oops. Um, Comfy. Yeah, oh, comfy. yeah, we got the, we got a Comfy team featuring uh, Gudra and Galarian Moltres. So yeah, you can absolutely. Pro- yeah, you can pop both of them with priority moves. That G- team? Giga Dr- yeah, that team's probably the that strongest. That one comes highly recommended. Yeah, just try, the, try the Gudra Comfy team out a lot. Yeah. Um, and then the, the other one there is we also have a uh, a retooled Series 8 team. That was your... My Calyrex Ice team. Yep, yep, that we have retooled to now a Glass Tree Air team. Yep, that was my most powerful Series 8 team, so I decided to just kind of... Boot Calyrex off the horse. Yeah, basically. I literally just, like, kicked them off the saddle, dude. <laughs> yep. so, uh, so, yeah, there's six really fun teams. They're, they're our favorite slash strongest so far from all of our testing in May. So we did a whole month worth of, worth of scouting and testing. And that's so far what we've come up with. This is our favorite teams. Yep. So we would love for you for the month of June to try them out. And please let us know either on Facebook uh, uh, or uh, in the comments on either this video or on the actual rental video itself yeah, yep. or any other video. If you ever rent our teams, please let us know. We want to know. Yep, we got, let us know in the comments. we got we lots lo- of socials. Yeah. Hit us up anywhere. We're on, we're on Facebook, Instagram, all that. We'll link that. We link it every video. We want to have discussion we want to know how it went with you yeah and we if you have any you know friendly critiques we'd love to hear that too we want to hear that discussion i mean it's too late they're not going to (laughs) change we're not going to change anything because the codes are out for the masses no but but we we like to hear the feedback we definitely love the feedback yeah it's you know we're all here to kind of grow and get better that's that's the point of this community that we're trying to build we're trying to build a community of pokemon players who absolutely help each other out and we we talk and share we share we talk in this that's what we're here to do. That's why we built this channel is to yep. build a community of people who want to get better, and we do that together. So, always leave whatever feedback you've got. We'd love to hear it. Absolutely. All right, move on to the next thing. There we go. All right, Justin, tell them about Project June. So, all of this month of June, we've uh, told you about it a couple times on the last podcast and a couple different videos already. Uh, the first video just launched this week. Uh, the second one will be following shortly. Uh, and then we have another team featuring this week also. But it is Gigantamax to Master Ball. We're doing G-Max to Master Ball all month of June and potentially July. Uh, basically this summer we're going to be featuring the like most favorite or most popular or that we have to come yeah, up with we, in testing in, in we, May? We are trying to feature Pokemon who don't get seen a lot. Like mm-hmm. we're trying to we're trying our best to like to have fun with it and we're we're trying to show off like oh look at that. So the first one up is a Gigantamax Copper Raja team. Yeah. And we actually do have the rental code. The rental code is out. Uh, we uh, the link in the description for yeah. the video. Uh, all the videos that are um, going to be this sort of part of the Gigantamax to June or Gigantamax to Master Ball in June. Uh, some of them will be rental codes and some of them won't. Yeah, We'll have it in the title. The and meme teams. Like if we feel yeah. like it's pretty good, then we'll put out a rental code. But if and it, we'll have multiple videos of those ones if they have rental codes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, But the first one is Gigantamax Copper Raja. We're running basically a Trick Room team. It's It's got the Dusclops with the Bulldoze to proc yep. a zero-speed Copper Raja's weakness policy in a trick room 
sort of pretty similar to what we're doing on the sand team with the gigalith. Yep. So uh, similar, the team also has a couple different phasers. So we've got like a really bulky Suicune with a red card and roar. We've got a dragon tail Duraludon who also happens to be Gigantamax in case we run across something that we. Um, in case we want to. Well, because it PP stall because it can it can boost defenses with steel spike yeah, because yeah. the elephant can't. And then we also have certain checks like the fact that it has stalwart, so it can get around redirections like uh, Kanto Raichu, for example. Yeah, so it can up. so I can I can Dynamax and Max Lightning in one shot a Celesteela or a uh, like a Moltres or something like that. Yep. 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 So, so yeah, the last thing I want to say about it is uh, like we mentioned, we're trying to feature. We won't be we. Like Pokemon, like Cinderace and Venusaur, are not at the top of our list. You guys have seen those on the ladder. You've s- we're using them, but they're probably not going to be. They're not the feature. They're either. not the top priority. Yeah. If it goes long enough and we get time, like we'll definitely throw out a, a G Max Cinderace feature at some point. But it's not on the top of our priority list no, at all. I mean, you guys have all fought G Max Cinderace. Exactly. Like, it's not that exciting, and everyone hates Venusaur for some reason. <laughs> Even though that's your favorite. Yeah, it's my favorite. But so, um, and you know, we've got a Sun team that that features our Venusaur and Charizard. So that's it's not part of Gigantamax. So it's sort of adjacent. But the, the specifically Gigantamax to, to Master Ball, we're gonna try to feature. Less, a little, a little off used. meta. Yeah, lesser oh, use. The, the more fun kind of yeah, stuff, yeah, like yeah. Caparaja. And then the second one coming out this week, we're about to announce. Yeah. Um, the last one. Uh, it, the, so we got Gigantamax Caparaja, and then what's the Oh, other? yeah, Butterfree, Butterfree. So the we're next... Gonna, once, we hit, once we're done hitting record on this, Gigantamax, we're going to try to get on Butterfree. Yeah, Gigantamax Butterfree team. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. We've got... Uh, uh, the the ability to spam bu- uh, quiver dance or to boost up with quiver dance, then spam befuddle and and boost on the ha- or you know rely on the hacks and the, the double goal, sleep. The goal of the video is going to be to click befuddle as many times as possible. That's yeah, the whole that's the entire like that's the goal oh, and win like get some wins with be- befuddle hacks because when you yeah, use it, dude, it's, it's so fun. It's so fun dude. and it's like it's a so it's a really fun team and it's a good team to use. How do I say this? It's a good team to use when you're low ladder. Yeah, like we're like trying to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we don't know. It's really fun, though. It we, is really, really fun. We've we don't been, know we've if had you're a lot climbing. Of fun testing. Yeah, we don't know if you're climbing a number one in Master Ball of this, but we're we're gonna we're gonna use it. And, and there will be a rental code included in that one as well. Yeah, for sure. This is gonna be a feature team. Like it is good enough to be a feature team. It's not just a meme team. Yeah. And that's the fun part about it is that it features Butterfree, mm-hmm. and it's actually pretty decent. Yeah, it actually like does surprising amounts of damage with Helping Hands. So. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I think that's going to bring us to the last announcement. Oh, one more announcement. Let's yep. do it. All right, the last announcement is uh, something that I'm pretty excited for: is Showdown Sundays. We kind of uh, realized, um, and this is a thumbnail from the Reggie Drago singles video that I did. Uh, we'll link that in the description as well. Um, Reorganizing. Of, yeah, we kind of talked about, and we're trying to get on, on a, like a different, like a sort of almost like a schedule, but not. We want to make sure that we're covering our bases for like singles and doubles content. In the month of May, we did a whole bunch of doubles content, and then we mm-hmm. kind of like looked back and we were like, "Man, we need something for our singles. We need to balance it we out. We need some something for our singles." So uh, we're going to be doing Showdown Sunday. So every single Sunday, you're going to be getting a at least one, a, at least one video for. So like, yeah, every Sunday you're going to get some singles content on Showdown from us. That doesn't minimum. mean that minimum. So that doesn't mean that we're, there won't be more singles content throughout the week. Like, exactly. I've been working on the 3v3. It just means you know? bare minimum, no matter what life schedules or whatever, we have had a, we have a goal for ourselves that no matter what, we're at least going to put out one quality showdown, and it could be anything. Yeah, it might not be like laddering. It, it might be versus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Battles. But it's going to be showdown singles content of some kind yes it could be a meme game mm-hmm. could be a serious game could be like he said could be some scrims could be like all kinds of ladders something. could be any tier from zu to o to ubers yes hint hint wink wink <laughs> so like j- but no matter what you can always guarantee that we're gonna have at least one video for showdown singles every Sunday. Yeah, something that we're super excited about and something very that's excited. A little more structured. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, a little, a, a little, uh, a little target to try to hit. Yeah, you know what I mean. So Sundays, just look forward to that. It, it, it's going to come out every Sunday, and 
I feel let like us know it, what you think in the comments about it, and yeah. let us know what um, what type of singles content you want to see for Showdown Sundays. Yep. What what do you want? Let us know in the comments, either on Facebook or down below here on YouTube. Yep. All right, so we are going to take a little break, and then we're going to get into the main subject. That's going to be Team Archetypes. Um, and Really excited yeah. to talk about these. Yeah. So, all right, we'll catch you guys in a second. Finger guns, finger guns, finger guns, finger guns, finger guns, finger guns. And we're back. Um, today's main subject is going to be Team Archetypes. We're gonna be talking about three main types of team archetypes. Justin, what are they? So we got basically hyper offense, go fast, hit hard, mm -hmm. uh, or go slow, hit hard. Yeah. <laughs> in a, in a trick room? We've got stall, and we have the sort of middle of the road uh, utility belt balance team. Everybody loves stall, dude. Everybody loves Everybody stall. Everybody loves that middle one. <laughs> We'll, so, we'll blow by that second one real quick. Yeah, well, sorry. Okay. So we've got sample teams, and then we've got sample concepts for VGC that we'll talk about. Yep. Um, so we're going to have those up on screen while we talk about those. So let's get right into it. We're going to talk about hyper offense first. So right before we get into the team archetypes, we just want to talk a, a little bit. Uh, we got a little definition of the day kind of thing. We want to talk about cores. Yeah. So in Pokemon, Brandon, what is... What does the word core mean to you? Um, core is when you've got your elemental types, uh, your defensively, um, kind of in a circle. Mm -hmm. So, uh, like Firewater Grass is a core that I know that you like That's to run all the That's my favorite. Time. I run in the Firewater Grass core. There's a reason that we have that triangle. For, pe for people that play Fire Emblem, it's the exact same thing with the, the lance, the axe, and the sword triangle in terms of... Yeah, yeah. Fire so like, beats grass, grass beats water, water it, it's the it's rock, and paper, every, scissors. And everyone that's, that's actually you already know this because of the starter Pokemon. Mm -hmm. You know, the fire beats the grass Pokemon, exactly. the grass beats the water, and the water beats the fire. And there are a couple of, of circles out there that don't and they don't have to work like that. It's just necessarily a, a core the core is usually for me. How I build my teams is I start with a defensive core. Yeah. So the offensive cores exist as well. Exactly. But I usually build a either a fire, water, grass core, and it's usually a defensive core. Yeah. So, you know, you could run, like, a really bulky, like, Tangrowth on the phys physical defense Tangrowth with a special defense Blastoise, and then uh, Intimidate, you know, bulky Arcanine, and boom, yeah. there's your bulky yep. core, yep. fire, water, grass. Yeah. So, um, another core that we... what Your favorite way to do it, the way you build your teams, you usually start with either... Past your initial concept, you usually start with, like, your... Defensive core too. Yeah, yeah. I usually, usually start with defensive core for my teams too. Yeah. Usually, like at least one solid physical wall and one. This is my dedicated special wall for yep. the team. And, they, and, they usually, and we both obviously they usually like counteract each other's damage. Yeah, they usually complement each other pretty yeah. well. Yeah. Um, and that's usually how we both generally start. Is like after the initial concept, the very first thing we do is we're like, all right, who's gonna be my main tank on the fizz? Who's gonna be my main tank on the spadef? Yep. Yeah. So, all right, with that, let's talk about hyper offense. All right, so first we're going to talk about hyper offense and how hyper offense works. Um, I built this team in five minutes, so don't use it. It probably gets 6 0 by Kirum. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is literally just a random example. Like, of, I literally put yeah. this together in five minutes, but it's going to show you the basic, like, concept. The structure or the it. foundation. Yeah. yeah. So, hyper offense. I've got, I got Coco on screen because the first thing I want to say about hyper offense, and um, we should reiterate, we should, we should say that this style of hyper offense might be on the way out because when I run hyper offense, I run dual screens with light clay, yep. which is banned in every tier but OU now. Yep. Uh, we might do a whole video talking about light clay. Um, and then, Sad day. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the way, the way that hyper offense has worked traditionally... Um, screens have always been a big part of it. You get a really fast screen setter, and that kind of litigates some of the damage that your really squishy offensive pieces take, so they can live one or two more hits while they're dealing out damage. Mm -hmm. um, like I mentioned, it's going to be it's it's already banned 
in uh, lower formats, but in OU you can still use it. That's why I decided to make this an OU team. Yeah. To kind of show off the strategy. So the future of screens and hyper offense is kind of questionable. It's it's up in the air. So uh, like hyper offense, I feel like it's going to change a little bit in the in the next coming weeks and years. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that that's the first component that I I want I like to talk about. Um, you want to talk about the whole like pivoting side of I, hyper offense? So it's different now than when we kind of grew up yes because heavy duty boots yes like it, that's it's a whole different world in terms of the ability to have a pivot pokemon like back in the day you might run something like uh heliolisk yeah and you might put a life orb or an expert belt or magnet or, or whatever, whatever yeah. right we yeah. focus it a million different things but now putting boots on it even though it's not weak to stealth rock, just the fact that you're not taking that, you can just freely come in and do what you want, harass, or just volt switch out, and you're not locked in. It's just that kind of, like, oh, wow, it's like that light bulb, like, thing, like, ooh, yeah. As soon as the 8th gen dropped, every competitive player, we were all like, ooh, heavy duty boots. Yeah. Hey, bro, check. Like, our chat, personally, we were like, oh, hey, check this out. There's an item now that lets us switch in for free. Yeah. And that was one of the first things we jumped on was offensive pivots with, with boots. With boots, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and like <clears throat> Obviously, this one is screen pivot with boots, but still the same the same general concept, pivoting yeah. with boots. But an offensive pivot with boots is really strong. That's one of the reasons that I believe, even though he's not necessarily the strongest poke in the world, he's fast and he's strong enough, uh, Zara Aura. Exactly, yeah. And he's like a good like sub for Coco here. Like, yeah. like these Pokemon, like I'm not going to like go like in depth with every Pokemon, but like I got a bulky Swamper here, a little bit of speed with a flip turn, yes. you know what I mean? Like. Nice choice band of flip turns. Like, you just flip turn out on things that switch in on you. So, like, it's so, so then strong. you can switch over to your counter. Choice banded Swamper. Oh, it hurts with a capital H. Yeah. Like, like, it's like, so you'll, good. Like, if you notice, the first yep. three Pokemon here I have are pivot Pokemon. Yep. Um, What's the pull? U turn? The yeah. Pull, yeah, U turn with, with. Spacks, nice. Yeah, so, like, you know, you, you bring out this Mon, and if you expect. Okay, so you expect Clefable to come in on your. Yep. Draco Meteor. You you turn out to Cartana. You know, and, and now you're ready to go. Yeah, and now you're, you're not, and now all you got to do is read if they're going to switch or not, and then you can just spam knockoff. And this is like the most broken Scarfer in the game, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> and then you got things like this, you know, knocking off opponents' items is really yep. important. And then I got Excadrill here as like your kind of like to Insurance set your stealth policy. rocks. Yeah, he's just kind of there to kind of support the team with stealth rocks. Mold Breaker's like good Mold too. Breaker. But, uh, one thing that I want to mention that if, if Screams ends up being a kind of dead, lesser scene, yeah, yeah um, you can always go with a damage sponge here. And like, I really like this guy, right? Yeah. Oh, not that one. This one. This is an excellent, excellent damage sponge. Yep. Um, you can run. You can run this Anything with an assault vest. You can run yep. this fizz death with an assault vest of four attacks. You can run slack off. Um, alternatively, I personally like the slack off. That's my favorite. Alternatively, you can run either or the other. Oh no, that's you can run either or the other slows because they have teleport. So like you get the regen, but regenerator is like the whole point. But like having regen plus teleport, which you can only do on slow king and slow bro Cantonian. Yeah, I like that. If you can't run screens, just like having a damage sponge like this, and then having that slow teleport to switch into your counters, I think that. It's kind of already a component for hyper offense. And, and boots regenerator teleports already been a popular thing exactly, that we talked about. Exactly. So, so, so similar yeah, concept, yeah. just on the more bulky side. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and then um, so that kind of covers it for singles and VGC. What do you kind of categorize, categorize as hyper offense? Basically, there's three like little bullet points here. Is um, we basically have the versions of speed control. Yes. So. You have Tailwind, yes, which sets up uh, for your entire side of the field plus two speeds, so like an agility boost. Yes. You've got Trick Room, super popular in VGC because it swaps around speed tier, so now the slower one goes first. So now you have things like you know, your base 20s and 30s and 40s going first instead of your Dragon Bolts or whatever. Yes. Uh, and then you also have the Weather. So you have things like... Um, 
Swift Swim, which is a doubles your speed in the rain, or you have Chlorophyll, which doubles your speed in the sun. Yep. Sand Rush and Slush Rush are for sand, for hail, for hail and, and, and sand storm chlorophyll respectively. for sun. Yep. Yeah. So you know, seeing things like Torkoal Venusaur in VGC or Kingdra Politoed. Yeah. So like I pulled up the rain team, like this Dragonite team. Uh huh. You could literally just slot Kingdra in here. And, and then yep. you kind of have that idea that you were just talking about, like Swift Swim. Then you got the Dragon, the Water, and the... And then you run Hurricane. Yeah, like, you know what I mean? You can run Draco Meteor or... Um, Dragon Pulse. Or Dragon Pulse. Then you run Hydro Pump. And then you run Hurricane. You throw a Life Orb on it. Yep. That's your speed control there. You know, you got your Polytoad. Yep. And then you had mentioned, like, Tailwind, too. Yeah, uh, Tailwind. You know, we got really Tailwind nice. here, too. So... So yeah, this this kind of like the weather example of yeah, that yeah, speed yeah. control you were talking about. Yeah, speed control like is super important in VGC, and that's usually how the offensive pieces go. Like the hyper offensive teams of VGC, like one of the things you could see is like uh, the Torkoal or or um, Nine Tails, but it's usually Torkoal Venusaur, yep. and then Venusaur is super fast. Uh, because of the sun of uh, the chlorophyll boost, yeah. and you can Dynamax turn one and just put out a lot of damage. With or sleep damage. powder, or, or sleep can, powder, or yeah, the, the be able to have the super f fast sleep powder on a focus sash. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a popular set, so that's a really like hyper offense because it's just you start off the game before turn one. You already have a speed advantage. Exactly. So I would say weather is probably the premier version of hyper offense. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's not really to good. say yeah. you can't be defensive, like bulky, like our sand team. Yeah, that's just a bunch is of fat incredibly mods. tanky Pokemon, but uh, depending on the situation and if you, it doesn't take a whole lot, it's not like you have to wish for the stars here. Giggle the Cradle can one shot basically the world. Yeah. So. I mean, they're tanky, and they're rock types, so they get extra boosts from being in sandstorm. So that a adds to the tankiness. Yep. And, and that's where the sand, or, um, the trick room, the trick room aspect of that comes. That speed. So that's another hyper offense. Is like you just, oh, but that one needs a little setup. Whereas the weather, it's instant. Yeah. You just exist. Yep. Yep. As long as you have a chlorophyll ability and you exist in the sun, you're just that fast. Yep. So it's a. There, yeah, those are different. And then, obviously, Tailwind and Trick Room would take at least a turn to set up. Trick Room is probably the third one down yeah. because Trick Room is negative priority, so you're always going to be basically you're self quashing that turn. Yep. You're going to be going last in the turn. Yep. So that kind of covers it for Hyper Offense. Let's move on to our next thing, which what is we got? everyone's favorite. Stall! Stall! All right, we're talking about Stall here. This team is Nasty. So I borrowed this team from a Reddit user called uh, Flaming Orange. Shout out. Shout out to Flaming Orange. You don't know that I borrowed your team, but I did. Um, but I thought that this team really encapsulated Stall. And, yeah. And, and this it's a really is, good example of just like a, that annoying, like hitting your head on a brick wall yes, kind of thing. Like yes. That's what this team, that's what Stall teams are. And you can find them in every tier from ZU to Ubers. Yes. It's teams that utilize. Toxic, Protect, Leech Seed, Rocky Helmet, yep. uh, a lot of times knockoff to anti-healing, stuff yep. like that. The, 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 the big crux, of, or not, not the crux, but like the way you build a stall team, obviously the you're core. looking for defensive mons. Yeah, bulky mons. But the core, you're talking about like having a way to s safely switch into things like, um, so you got Ferrothorn here, uh, obviously weak to Flamethrower. You got a Blissey that can take that for Blissey days. That takes that for days. Okay, and then you know, fighting move incoming. Switch over to Toxapex. Physically defensive. Resist yep. the fighting move, and then you can just you can just recover. Regener you regenerator got lots of out. healing options. You got regenerator, yep. and these get knockoff as well. Yeah, Re um, regenerator is a really big deal. And I think they get teleport. No, they don't. No, not that. They have to be Kanto because they get that from uh, Go. Or okay. let's go yeah, like Arcanine Pikachu. or whatever. Gets yeah, let's go tall. Pikachu. Eevee. Okay, yeah, yeah. So it's a tutor in that game. Yeah, like having like the point is really um, to just slowly wear down your opponent. You are often playing like if you're successful with your stall team, you're often playing like hundred turn games. 
yeah. on showdown. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You're you're going over a hundred. That's not an exaggeration. No, no, no. Because uh, that's the point is you're literally just sitting like you're you're playing the long chess game. You're waiting you're, for your opponent to just quit. You're the old grandpas in the in the in the park playing chess till like the sun goes down. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. you you don't have a care in the world. You're just sitting there clicking buttons. Yep. Yeah. So and, and and you'll notice that a lot of these Pokemon. Actually, I think all of these Pokemon on this team specifically have a recovery option. Uh -huh. You kind of it's you you got to have that recovery option on That's a lot the of these key. these mods. Like you got Slack off here. Shout out to Meganium. Yeah, Mag yeah. If that I, gets strength sap. I hope he gets dude. strength no, sap. No, no, give <laughs> me strength sap. Roll the double sixes. Nerf strength sap. No, give if I agree. Nerf strength sap. But as long as it exists, I hope that they give it to Pickles. Uh, sorry. Uh, it's Meganium. a Meganium. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, we're off track. Um, but, like, yeah, recovery options. Um, strength Sap, like it's you so said, is a amazing. great one. Um, like, Just being able to roost, being able to recover, being a soft boil, roost, milk drink, soft boil, synthesis, moonlight. We use moonlight Umbreon yep. on the Leech Caesar seed, team. Recover. Yep. Um, Leech Seed wish, is a wish real protect. good yeah. Leech Seed is a real big one. Wish is another really big one. Yep. Um, because, again, you only have to, we don't have to run the team just as is. Mm -hmm. Because, hypothetically, if you were to take exactly what you see here and you were to maybe swap out two Pokemon, just two, so you leave four of these massive tanks, okay? Mm -hmm. And you just swap out two for some hyper offense that we just talked about. See, like, that was a, that's a good point. Is yeah. That, that, that this is that, like a full that's that's salt that's thing. sort of my my lazy you know segue into the next section, <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah of balance. But yeah, that's sort of so basically what you learn in the hyper offensive teams. You're 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 leaning one end of the spectrum is like my main win condition is to kill. Yes. In the stall, it seems like it's offense versus defense, but. It's it's sort of your win con mentality. The win con of hyper offenses is, is I win by killing my opponent. Yes. Fast and hard. Yep. You want S twenty turn games. Stall when you're, when you're playing hyper offense. Stall, you win by not dying. Exactly. That's the difference. Yep. Yeah, like you got the sandstorm. You're a chip lot here. more reluctant to sacrifice a pawn in a stall team. Yep. Oh, and we did make a couple changes to this yes. team because like Rocky Helmet uh, yeah, yeah, Corviknight yeah. is more popular now. And, and Rocky Helmet like Love when it. you touch when you attack these two Pokemon here specifically, you're playing into their game, and you're doing you know, so what, much you're, damage. You know what I mean? Like if if you if you th if you want, you'll be like, taking a what is this an eighth and an eighth? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. That's so like lot. you you want to drop a CC on my Blissey, and I still got a Corviknight around. Yeah. Chances are, Corviknight's gonna. If this you could death, also potentially put a red card on one of these, and like there's yeah. a lot of cool options. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the last thing was all teams and singles I want to say is uh, sometimes you'll see these actually rounded out with one offensive piece like yeah, a yeah, nasty yeah. plot hydragon or something like to that. To be able to be th that that one sword yep. out of a, a group of shields. Yep, yep. And then like you do see pivoting in these teams as well. Like you see the U-turn here. U-turns. Um, Clefable likes teleport. to run teleport. Yep. Lissy can also run teleport. teleport. So pivoting also a really important part because then you present a different roadblock. Well, and, and it's a that being able to teleport is interesting because it's negative six priority. Yep. So being able to take the hit then teleport out yeah so you know like you turn it might be a speed thing like because it doesn't go by speed tier so you might be faster but you'll still take the hit on your tank rather than on your squishy carry yeah so it's a really nice option it's yep. like the slow flip turns that we like to run on our blastoise yep and then so as far as stall goes in vgc super uncommon especially because dynamax exists yeah so for vgc it's stall exists but it's very tangential s since uh sword and shield dropped yeah just because of the 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 timers timers and then like dynamax not dynamax accuracy for minimize exactly teams. so there is a thing like minimize uh clefairy or chance chancy excuse Chancey. me with shuckle power uh, or powers, defense swap uh, yeah, or whatever yeah. Yep. yeah guard swap i think it's guard called. swap yeah yep and so but mainly there's not really a bunch of stall. The the biggest things with stall right now in VGC that you'll come up against is any pokes. The the big premier ones right now that you'll see are like uh, we are repping Bronzong, but yeah. Uh, other than that, Ferrothorn and Reggie Steel with the Iron Defense Body Press sets, especially yeah, in the yeah. rain. And those are like hardly stall too because they become 
it's offensive once they get done. It's like a yeah once yeah depending on their spread like you can actually start to body press and do some real damage. But it's especially the Ferrothorn in the rain like because it's a similar thing here. But and then you have the you, the Leech Seed Protect Iron Defense Body Press. Yep, yep, yep. So you just kind of play that. Yeah, game. like Ferrothorn. That's a really a really excellent yeah. example of like that's stall basically the main that you'll thing. See. You'll see. That or Chansey. Yeah, yeah. Chansey's like the biggest one. Yep. So, yeah, like you were alluding to earlier, we're going to talk about our last one. And this is one, this is my build style. This is my build style. And this style is your also. build style as well. So, so, again, basically, we're about to jump into it. And uh, you're, we're about to take the first two, mash them together, and we get a balanced team. Alrighty, so this is an NU team. You've seen this a lot on the channel. This is my favorite team that we've probably ever created ever in competitive Pokemon, NU. especially for NU. This is, uses one of and a couple more of literally my top like five or ten pokes of all time yep. on this list. Yeah, and we, can we, we, built, we, we built this team together. We built this too, together so, live. So this was a really cool like experience. Mashing together of awesome. our favorite styles and some of our favorite Pokemon. Yep. All in one. All and this, in one. This team. Justin did feature this team recently this week or, or his last last week, week. Tuesday. Yep. Link we'll link that in the description as well. He hit the showdown ladder with this team. Um, so yeah, Justin, explain the piece. Let's we'll we'll go. Well, no, let's explain the concept first. So basically, the concept of balance, uh, like I said before, it's essentially you're taking the the peanut butter hyper offense and the jelly of stall. Yeah. And we're clapping them. Yep. Uh, that's lapping them. That's basically loosely what we're talking about here. So the stall pieces I want to talk about first. So we do have the Intimidate on Arcanine. It can't be understated. Like, Arcanine is an offensive piece on this team, but he does have the Intimidate plus Heavy Duty Boots, so he's he is sort of a pivot switch. We can be running a Teleport. We're not intentionally. Yeah, because this we, is like a mix of the two this ideas. This is that offensive. This this. Arcanine is literally straight down the center of both the first two concepts. Yep. Uh, where he is bulky himself, just natural stats plus intimidate, and then he does a crap ton of damage with a lot of good coverage and a lot of good speed options with yep. you know extreme speed. Plus, he also has the Iron Head to deal with the Sylveon, Sylveon. that we saw everywhere. Yep. And then we've got like the the Spadef. So now next thing we talk about is like the specially defensive and the physically defensive Pokemon. Yep. Um, this is our big defensive core here. Yep, so this this is... Uh, we got Blastoise here, obviously. Yep. Um, and you, as you can see from his moveset, Scald, Rapid Spin, Yawn, Flip Turn, he is literally there to kind of sponge a hit, and then you pick a move. You know, you can Yawn, or you can Flip Turn out, or, or, or things of that nature. Yep. Oh, Justin's going to make some live changes. Keep talking. Um, but yeah, like he comes oh. in and sponges a hit, and... Uh, oh, we got... So, yeah, we're running the slow version here so that you flip turn out last. So you sponge the hit, flip turn out. Um, there we go. Sassy. Sassy, yeah. Okay. So it's a, this is what we talked about with sort of that pseudo teleport. It's the slow flip turn. Yep. This yeah, is what yep. we, this is actually the Blastoise we have on cart. Yes. So this is, and it's, it's so good. Almost every video we featured has featured him being pivotal in some way he's our spinner uh we can you can run boots on him like absolutely yeah, you can yeah, you but can. we already have two boots on the team and it's just like and he doesn't have a recovery option so i like leftovers i better. do really like leftovers because he can sponge hits more than you think yeah i used him in the reggie drago vid yeah and he sponged a vote switch from zirkatry at like 70 he was at like 70 percent and still lived like but being able to hit back like and the yawn is so vital like every single move is just like it's the chef's kiss like it's so perfect yeah he, like if you he does you, his you job. can hit yawn and then yep. and then flip turn is always safe because then you know if they're gonna attack you like they'll attack you or they'll or switch, they'll switch. Out. so then you just flip turn out and then exactly. you keep up the offense and you momentum. have the momentum there yep. regardless so yawn for yeah yeah yep. yeah yeah 100 percent. it's so good yep and bronze on, on here this is probably my second favorite psychic type of all time behind grumpy yeah rest in peace grumpy oh she's coming back she's yeah. coming back <laughs> miss piggy yes she is um yeah but like bronze on super awesome right so yeah yeah what, what do you like about him on this team um he's our physically so Blastoise was our special. This is our this physical. This is our physical. We went, as you can see, we went all in on yep. physical defense here, and then four and special because whatever. Um, no pivoting options. However, like we got the toxic. We can't be toxic ourselves, so that's a really nice. Yep. I mean, unless the lazzle's around. A nice defensive switch outside um, of the lazzle. Yep. And uh, stealth rock, a body press, and iron defense. 
when you need to go on the offensive, you can do that with this iron defensive body press. It does so much damage. Yeah, it's actually it's actually a sneakily because we're running max defense. Most people would think, oh, max, you can run max spadef base one sixteen and be bulky on both sides for iron. And you totally can if you want to run a balanced tank. I'm not telling you it's bad. It's just this set of Bronzong. He's so tanky while also being such an offensive powerhouse. Yes. One iron defense, and you can Oko, this is a VGC stat, but Oko any any standard Rillaboom. Mm hmm. Yeah. So it's insane how much damage he can We've walled like whole teams with this thing. Walled, yeah. He's really good against Glass Tree Air. Yep. Uh, again, a VGC thing, but in, in terms of this team, he. He really packs the most defensive punch. Yeah. So let's move on to the political hyper offense part of the team. Sort of the pivot, right? Which we featured the pivot, or we'll talk about the pivot at the end. Yeah, yeah. The hyper offense. So the, the um, the, this is the, the, the damage. Yes. You know what I mean? This is the other side of that coin. This is how we're going to get killed. So that's how we stay alive and, and the tools we need. So setting... Hazard control, both removal or getting it. We've got some status, stuff like that. The damage here is in, I want to talk about your dragonfly set. So because you you get the credit on this one. Yeah. So I, we, we both love Flygon. This is my favorite dragon type of all time. Yep. So we've got DD here. Um, I run U turn on mine. He runs DD. Unfortunately, you still lose the other Flygon, but. This handles, like, the rest of the tier, honestly. Uh, I was running Expert Belt. Yep. Um, and, and you just have to know that going in. He could super effective hit almost every Pokemon in NU. Yep. With U-Turn, Earthquake, Fire Punch, and Thunder Punch. So yep. that's kind of the route we went. Scarf Flygon's really popular. But Flygon, in general, just provides a lot of coverage and a lot of damage. Um, and I like to run U-Turn. Yeah, that's the point, especially, with, especially with the item here. We're trying to hit those super effective... Yeah, so it kind of... Uh, that's what we're fishing for. That's So going into it, that's the mindset of like, okay, that's his job, yep. is to f look for something super effective and smash it. Yes, yep. So that's part of a lot of the damage. Uh, like we talked about, Arcanine does a lot of damage. He's got really good coverage. Uh, really good super effective hits. He's got the fairies, the waters, the grass, the steel. And he can hit. And the extreme speed cleanup cannot be understated. And, and this, is, this is like just... Touching on his move pool, you know what I mean. He's, he's got, so got much. crunch. He's got play rough. He's psychic got close fangs. combat. So psychic fans, um, and then and then we round it out with Sceptile, our speediest, Woo! our speediest threat with this one right here, potentially this our side. highest. Yeah. So basically, uh, the last video, uh, the biggest threat right now to this team, or one of the biggest threats to this team, is we already touched on it. Uh, the little poison lizard, Salazzle. Salazzle. There yep. you go. So because Salazzle outspeeds us. Uh, and has duo combo or duo stab that's super effective against our our friend Gaia here, our, our, our lovely Sceptile. So what we do uh, in the last game, we have to you have to play around it, and that's why we run things like the Blastoise. The Blastoise yep. is special defensive, and it walls the Salazzle all day. Yeah, Even the offensive though, versions. Yeah, the offensive Salazzles. Uh, our uh, Dragonfly. Yep. Is also another really good switch in because it resist it dual re it resists both the stabs. Yeah. So you kind of have to play around it, but once you can shoot off just one leaf storm or get if, all you gotta do is get some chip to where the because the lazo is so squishy, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter that at times four resists your leaf storm. You sh you're strong enough to kill it from I, th I believe it's about forty five percent. Yeah. So all you gotta do is get some sort of residual chip. You can get. I th but in the video, I believe what I did was I got an extreme speed hit off. Mm -hmm. Just did a lot of damage and came and then ended up getting uh, later on in the game. I ended up getting a leaf storm. He swapped in. He thought he, and what happened was he took the one leaf storm, lived at like two HP, proc that white herb. So leaf storm drops your special attack yep. and physical attack by two after you use it. The white herb procs once gets rid of any stat drops so now we're still at full special attack and now we can and now on burden proc so we get double the speed yeah so now we're way faster than anything on the field by far and we can now smash the uh the well, yeah, yeah. take 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 it out of off the off the board and now we can sweep the whole team yep and and it, it is a really nice check there and it also gives us a really nice 
uh, because we have Dragon Pulse, that's how we can help deal with enemy um, Flygons. Like you were talking, yeah. because our Flygon doesn't have a Dragon move. Our Sceptile does, and he outspeeds, and he has more than enough damage to just smack. Because we're not cutting ourselves with that first Leaf Storm, it gives us a really nice option to have a second Leaf Storm, or you know, Dragon Pulse, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, Dragon Pulse. It's yep. really good. Um, and I like to round out the team. We got like a utility. This mod. is the pivot, which we showed both. Sorry, we featured both. On the, so this is the combo, or this is the sort of the crux that you're seeing. We have featured these pivoters have been pivotal. Ha, yeah. hey. On Whoa. all three in all three categories. Yeah, pivoting is just the newest best. It's a it has it really is a whole new world. Like we used to pivot. But in, in a different light, Boots is, is a whole new thing. Exactly. We exactly. love Galvantula. You want to talk about this spider? Yeah, like the point of this this mod here is that obviously it's incredibly fast. We're not necessarily relying on it for damage. However, it can deal damage if needed. But Sticky Web is like the crux. Like, for this team specifically, like in case we're not able to get that Leaf Storm off, if we're able to get Sticky Getting Web Getting a Sticky off, Web is another way that we can outspeed... Um, like Salazzle. Salazzle. Or, or, or just like whatever, yep. you know yep. what I mean? Like creating that speed control is like really nice for the team in case we're not able to safely get off a dd or a leaf storm so yep. so to kind of like wrap a little bow on everything singles wise when we build balance teams uh when i build my balance teams i have a physical wall a special wall always at, and that's bare minimum yep bare minimum yep a gadget mon, which is our Galvantula here. And then I round it out with offensive options. A special, a physical, and then whatever else I feel the team needs after that. So that's yeah. exactly what we have here. We've got the special wall, physical wall, gadget mon, physical offense, special offense, and then, and then and our then wild this card. Is, this is our wild card. Like It's usually some sort of setup. Or, or yeah. there could be multiple setup, but usually that flex pick is, is a setup. Or, or it could be a choice mon that's... Yeah. Yeah. So... As far as like VGC goes, I feel like there's no like clear category for balance. Um, our biggest example would be like the our... the, bi the biggest thing that I have for balance for VGC, I call it the Batman build. So this is like the Batman utility belt, where he's got a gadget for every situation in that handy little belt, magic belt of his. That yeah, it, you know, it's like remember what's the uh, Harry Potter where where his. Uh, Hermione reach into the bag and it's just got you know it's yeah. just got everything. Yeah, yeah. That's what I feel like Batman's utility belt. It's just got every every tool in the box. I didn't have the the Gucci Comfy. I didn't have it built on my team, but I'll build it here really quick while you talk about it. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So the Gucci Comfy that we talked about in the uh, the rental code, you can rent this team right now. This is the closest thing by far that we have. Uh, floral healing ally switch. This is the closest thing that we have. To like a balance, this is our like crux balance VGC yeah. team. I'll put has, the mons in first. And yeah, then we'll, the, the it basically has everything you could ask for. So yeah, like if you want like we the have super... physical offense, we have special offense, we have physical and special defense, we have intimidates, we have fake outs, we have speed control, we have uh, healing, we have terrain control. Literally, ev basically every tool you, or almost every tool you could think of in what a BGC we got on format. Here? What else we got on here? Uh, there's also Feeny and Boomer. Feeny and Boomer. I knew that. Uh, we got screens. There's other than Taunt. That's I wrote Boomer in there. It's, <laughs> it's real boom. Yeah. Um, Taunt's yeah. one of the only tools we don't have, but we could. Yeah. We just don't. Um, but like I said, I'm not going to put like every single move in no, here. No, no, no. If yeah, you guys yeah. want to know more about the team, rent it. You, yeah, it's a, the rental code. We've talked about the team at Nauseam. We, we featured it three or four videos already, plus more to come. Yeah. So it's really, really good. This is our balance team here. So but, basically it screens Feeny. Um, yeah, so there, and that's, there's most of our special defense yeah. there. No, if, uh, it's, it's, it's max HP, 156 physical and then the rest in uh yep. special attack physical yep. defense and the special attack and it's dual screens feeny then we have um citrus berry parting shot three attacks with a fake out uh incin with 252 attack so that provides a little bit of physical defense physical defense intimidates as well as a fake out pressure we got parting shot which is really nice and then we have good damage there from the flare butts we have the uh comfy which can set up gudra with sap or excuse me triage boosted we have Flower Veil here, but it doesn't matter. Triage will boost the Giga Drain. Yep. 
into Gudra or the draining kiss into weakness policy on the Moltres yeah. so we can set up either way physical so or offensive. Physical offense, special offense, yep, or special offense. Defensive pieces. The, gadget, Gud the gadget Gudra bar. is max HP, max attack, and then it has a base 150 special defense with assault vest, so yep. it's incredibly specially defensive yep. just on its own. Yeah. We have Intimidates plus max HP. Uh, Boomer, yep. so we have a couple of good, and we have screens and a decently defensive bulky Feeny plus max defense Comfy. So most of the team can take defensive hits pretty well, yeah, naturally. And, and Rillaboom kind of functions as that other mom. He's and he's that flex pick because he can either kill things with Grassy Glide. He can Dynamax, do dr base one sixty drum solos. Yep. Uh, he has knockoff fake out. He's running Kaba Berry, so he can live that one airstream or whatever. Yep quite well and then slap back yeah so we hope you guys found that really informative we hope that for anyone who's out there and you're like kind of don't know where to go with your team building hopefully this helps um this is this is supposed to be like that solid foundation of like okay like this is your first real foot in the door this is the first class of like We've talked about a couple different ways to build teams, singles, doubles. We talked about we had the weather episode. Yes. We've talked about uh, different tournaments and stuff. But now we're really getting into the class segments of like sit down. This is how we're going to start structuring to build teams. Yeah. So um, we have a few ideas for what episode eleven is going to be, but we're going to potentially keep going with this theme of teaching everybody kind of. Not necessarily there's a right or a wrong way, but just our style. Because we've grown up together. So we've learned together, and we have a lot of similar traits, but a left and right perspective. In ter and I don't mean politically. Yeah. I mean and in terms of, like, there are certain things that he likes or values, and certain things that I... And, and we balance each other out and come together. And that's how this channel works. So we w are going to move forward with these next couple of podcasts keeping on how showing you how we build teams yeah it's gonna be a lot of conceptual stuff because yeah. there's nothing going on news wise in the pokemon world like the series we don't know when series is nine is gonna end like we might yep. be running series nine until All diamond summer. and pearl comes out yeah like diamond and pearl might be the next big thing in the pokemon world uh, no, the, the next big thing is the, the 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 league of legends thing What's that oh called? yeah, we Pokemon might, Unite. Yeah, we might dabble on that too. That's gonna be a lot of fun. But like, as far as like the things that we cover now, yeah. VGC and and like and singles, singles, there's nothing happening until Diamond and Pearl comes out. Yeah, which we assume will. So add more we're Pokemon to the decks. we're gonna want to make sure that we get as many new players in as possible, and we want to teach you guys from the ground up. We want to start by teaching you good habits for how to build teams from yeah. day one, rather than have to relearn. But if you want to relearn, that's no problem. This is just a way that we do it, and we invite you all to come along. Invite your friends, anybody that thinks you'd enjoy it. Yeah. We want you to leave a thumbs up on the video. We also invite you to subscribe today. If you're already a subscriber, we want you to hit that bell. Where are we? Down here? Oh, down that? I don't know. Down that way. There we go. Hit, yeah. that, hit, the, <laughs> hit that bell. It's going to give you a notification every time we upload a new video to the channel. Yeah. Um, so I think I got nothing more to say, man. I think it was no, a good episode. No, I think it was a really good episode. Yep. Really good podcast. Yeah. Uh, until next time, I've been Grass Leader Justin. And I'm Zero. Class dismissed. Finger guns. Finger guns. Finger guns.